and his presence is here for everyone to receive from the Lord his presence is here for everyone to receive from the Lord in his presence there is fullness of joy not pain not sorrow but pleasures at his right hand receive the pleasure of the Lord in the name of Jesus Father I declare perfection to whatever you have declared in the lives of your people thank you king of glory for manifestations of healings manifestations of deliverance manifestations of freedom manifestations of breakthrough father every good thing that you have done in the life of anyone here and as many that are believing you and watching us online let it be perfected in the name of jesus christ as you have done for people in here lord do for those that are watching as many that are in pain right now watching us on youtube on facebook i declare your healing right now and as many that will be watching even after now receive your healing right now receive your healing right now receive your miracle right now in the name of jesus thank you father thank you lord in jesus name amen let's be seated in his presence amen Praise the Lord. It's good to be in his presence. Amen. You are already blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to welcome as many of you that made it here today. And we say the Lord bless you. And I want you to know that God has something special for you this week. And you don't have to miss it. And I want you to encourage as many that can be here this week. Because God is doing supernatural things this week. This week is a week of encounter with God. Amen. If you can just come this week, even as many that are watching and you are from around here, if you can come this week, there's nothing that you believe God for that you will not receive this week. Impossible things will be made possible this week. And I want your amen to be louder. And I want to welcome and uh, appreciate our new pastor, Pastor Tishana. God bless you. And I would have really loved to be here at the time of your ordination. But all of my support was here for that ordination. And by the grace of God, on Sunday we will be confirming everything that was done on that day amen <clears throat> and we are glad to have you as part of this family and this commission amen <clears throat> last night I spent a lot of time talking about God doing things in seasons and time 
and we read from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 and the Bible says to everything there is a season and to every purpose there is a time and I want you to see how God worked in seasons even with his people and I told you that this year 2022 is not as any other year it is a covenant year a special year when I decided to write what I thought I would have written first as my first book You know, God gave me a specific message. And many don't know that. And I want you to know that existence is different from living. Are you hearing me? Existence is different from living. There are people who are existing and they are not living. And the proof of that can be seen in St. John chapter 10. Jesus was speaking to people that were breathing. And he said to them, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. He was telling people that were breathing about having life. So what did they have? They were just existing and never had life. He came that they might have life. And so I want you to know that even before you came here, you were existing. And life has to do with fulfillment of purpose. Somebody can exist here for 100 years and yet they did not live because they didn't fulfill purpose. I was preaching the funeral and I said many times people think that when you die at 36 that means you didn't fulfill life. But life is by assignment. It's not really by how long. Are you hearing me? Before you came here, you were existing. But you are brought here to live. <laughs> now watch this. In Isaiah chapter 40. 500 years. In fact, 700 years. Before John the Baptist was born. He was revealed. Said there will be voice of one crying in the wilderness. And said make straight the way. So John the Baptist. Can you take that baby out a little bit and quiet the baby? So John the Baptist was around before he came. He was in the warehouse of God. Now, Jesus was around before he came. You know that?
He has been around. Take it easy with the baby. Don't trouble the baby. Don't get angry with the baby. Just pet the baby. Amen. So you know that when Elizabeth was pregnant with with John, Mary was also pregnant with Jesus. Eh? And Mary went to see Jesus. You remembered what happened? The baby leaped in her womb. And, and Elizabeth said, the mother of my Lord. And you know what was happening? The two guys knew each other. That was the first time they met in the water. <laughs> that was the first water meeting before they met at Jordan. When Jeremiah was afraid to preach, what did God say to him? Before you were formed, in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before they gave birth to you, I made you a prophet. So he did not become a prophet when he came out. He was a prophet before he came. Is somebody hearing me here? And many of you do not know that you were even existing before you came. And you did not come to continue existing. You came to live. But your living begins when you discover your purpose. Your living begins when you discover your purpose. You are here on the mission. And anything that is contrary to your mission, your mission has to be dealt with. That is why we come to service. You know, there are many things we do that we are not conscious of. What did we come to today? Service. And you know the meaning of service? We have worship and we have service. When you come to service, things are to be taken care of. When you take your car for service, and what do they do? They work on it, they remove some things that are not supposed to be there because the car is there to fulfill certain purpose. To be able to take you from place to place. So they have to change your oil, change your filters, check the brakes and change the brakes and everything. You see, when you come, you are here to be serviced so that you can fulfill purpose. Amen. When there is sickness, it has to be removed Amen. or else you won't fulfill your purpose. When there is a curse, the curse has to break. So that you can fulfill your purpose. When there are covenants that are contrary to the will of God, the covenants need to break. Amen. That is why you come to service. You didn't come just to sing from him. So when there is anointing, there are things that are to be done. So that servicing can take place. Now see how God operates in times and seasons. He saw his people in bondage. They were troubled in the time of Isaiah. 
But you know what God said in Isaiah 10, 27? He said, and it shall come to pass in that day. Not today, but in that day. Can you give me Isaiah 10, 27, please? Ten twenty-seven. That's it. It shall do what? Come when? What is that day? A promised day. Even though you have burdens now, you have yokes now, but it shall come to pass in that day. And what will happen? That his burden from your shoulder. You see, what you are carrying is not your burden. It's his burden. Amen. Even though some people claim it and say, my diabetes, <laughs> my pressure, it's not yours. It's his. Amen. Something that is a burden to you cannot be yours. It's his burden. Amen. And it shall be taken from your shoulder. And what will happen next? And there's no yoke from your neck. Check your life. You can know when you have yoke. But by the time this week is ending, we deal with all those stuffs. How do you know you have yoke? In Israel, what they used to do in their family, they would take the experienced ox. The older ox, you know what the ox is, eh? Like a cow, a bull, and 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 they will put a wooden yoke on the older ox, the experienced ox, and then yoke it with the younger ox, so that the both of them will begin to till the soil. Now, you know, the younger one will get tired. And when it gets tired, because of the yoke, the older one will stay be forcing it to go the direction that it doesn't want to go. When yoke is on your neck, you can know when your life is going the direction that you don't want to go. When something keeps taking you where you don't want to be, Your life is going in the direction of pain. Going in the direction of sorrow. Going in the direction of disappointments and failures. You know that you want to go right, but something keeps taking you left. It means there is a yoke. So something is pulling you somewhere that you don't want to be. But as much as there were burdens and yokes, he said in that day, It shall come to pass in that day. Because he's dealing with season. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. So Isaiah 10 27, what did he say? Let me hear everybody. Which day? Which day? Okay, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. And what does it say there? I have which day? Which day? So in the time of Isaiah, he promised that day. Now in the time of Jeremiah, is which day? So you see, Jeremiah needs to know that he's not in Isaiah's day. He's in this day. So what was promised can happen this day. Oh, somebody not here. There are things that were promised some time ago. But Jeremiah is in the day. So you cannot live your life like you are hoping for that thing to happen because the day has come. See this day. I have set you over the nations and over the kingdoms 
To do what? To root out. To pull down. And to destroy. And to throw down. There are things that are not supposed to be there. They need to be rooted out. There are things that are not to be standing in your lives. <laughs> they are to be pulled down. Amen. There are things that are not to exist in your life. They are to be destroyed. Amen. There are things that need to be thrown down before we begin to build and to plant. And this is what will be happening this week. But you see, it can be the day, but it's not the time. Now watch. Sometimes when we are flying, they tell us your flight is 7.20 a.m. And you always see that? Yeah. And because your flight is 7.20 a.m., they make sure they get you on the plane and they tell you boarding time is 6.40. So we start boarding by 6.40, meaning that the plane is supposed to be taken off by 7.20. But then when you get on the time, might you get on the runway, then there are times that even though it is 7.20, but it will let you know there are four other planes ahead of us. So it is the day of your flight, <laughs> but you have to wait for the time. Hallelujah. Nahum chapter 1 and verse 13. Not Nehemiah, not because Nehemiah is sitting here. I said Nahum. N A H U M. Chapter 1 and verse 13. All right. It says when? When, 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 when? For now, I will do what? <laughs> and do what? And burst your bones. There was a long time God said, and it shall come to pass that his burden will be removed and the yokes will be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing to do that had not been released yet. Then it came to another time, he said, this day. And now he is saying, now. Somebody say now. now. So when do you expect your yokes to be destroyed? Now. When do you expect your burdens to be removed? Now. Now. Amen. So you see, God was operating with seasons and time. I want you to be in high expectation every time you come because something is going to happen. And listen, listen, burdens and yokes can be frisky when there's no anointing. But where there is anointing, yokes and burdens don't show up. Because they know that if they show up, only one thing is sure, they shall be destroyed. They shall be destroyed. And I believe the anointing is here. Amen. So yokes cannot exist and burdens cannot exist. Amen. I don't care what you came here with that was weighing you down. It's falling off tonight. Amen. Amen. Is falling off tonight. Amen. We left that day, we came to this day, and we have come to now. So every time you come in his presence, expect. When you see his presence hovering, expect. 
Listen, I'm teaching you this secret. Every time, you see, every day doesn't look like the same. There are moments in his presence. You see, we have the universal presence of God and the manifest presence of God. The universal presence of God is even in hell. So even though God is present in hell, that is why in, in Psalms 139, and, and David said, even when I go to hell, you are there. His presence is there, but his presence cannot do anything in hell. So no one can get saved in hell. That's the universal presence. And then he has his manifest presence. So whenever you sense the manifest presence, it means that he's there to do something. So when the anointing is flowing, it's the time to speak even what seems impossible. So anytime you come to service and you come to worship and you see the anointing is flowing, begin to speak those things. Begin to speak those things that seems as if they are not. Speak them and they will come into being. Is somebody here with me? I'm teaching you secrets how miracles happen. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And in verse 2, the earth was without form. The earth was void. The earth was dark. The earth was flooded. Everything negative happened to the earth. But when the spirit of God hoover over the flood, over the waters, what happened? God spoke. Why did he speak? Because the presence was moving. <laughs> and whatever he said came to pass. In the presence of God. Listen, I don't care what the enemy had done. Just begin to speak what you want. Don't speak what you are feeling. You might be feeling flawed. You might be feeling darkness. You might be feeling shapelessness. But don't speak it. Speak what you want. Listen, when the spirit of God was moving, the place was dark. The place was flooded. The place was shapeless. But God did not speak what he saw. He spoke what he wanted. And he has given the same power when the anointing is flowing. Speak what you want. I believe this week creative miracles are happening in this place. Creative miracles. I want everyone to be in expectation this week is not ordinary please don't consider this week as all the weeks whatever you want God to perfect in your life as you come here every day this week expect something to happen I preach to thousands, but even when I have few, I feel like the anointing is still the same. In fact, it's an advantage for the few because the anointing to solve thousand problems, when it comes to solve 25 problems, it will be too much. Are you with me? So tell your neighbor, be in high expectation. Some of you didn't even tell your neighbor. You only said it to yourself. I told you, tell your neighbor. I didn't say say it to yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let me share with you briefly because I believe God has done great things already. Genesis chapter 26. Commission for supernatural increase. Genesis chapter 26. Commission for supernatural increase. And there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac went to Abimelech 
king of the Philistines in Jireh. Do you know what Femi is? Dryness. And the dryness is caused by lack of rain. And so at that point of time, nothing grows. At that time, nothing grows. At that time, there is no multiplication. At that time, there is no increase. In fact, in the time of famine, crops are dying. They are diminishing. They are dying. And not only that crops are dying, but animals are dying. And not only that animals are dying, but people are dying. And so the Bible says that there was famine in the land. And the same thing happened before. In the days of Abraham, the father of Isaac. And so what did Isaac decide to do? Isaac decided to go to the king of the Philistines, to Abimelech in Jira. He went there to tell the king, well, I don't see anything here for production. Business cannot survive here. Even lives cannot be sustained here. And so I think I want to check out of this place. I don't think I can be here. Verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. If you want to experience supernatural increase, you don't rely on your feelings. If you want to rely on supernatural increase, you don't just do what other people did before in their problem, in their crisis. The first step for supernatural increase, as God says that this is our year of supernatural increase, the first step is to hear from the Lord. We need to learn to hear from the Lord. Let me tell you something. Because crisis is in this land does not mean that God is not here. Because crisis is in Liberia does not mean that God is not there. Because crisis is in Ukraine does not mean that God is not there. Because crisis is in Nigeria does not mean that God is not there. Because crisis is in America does not mean that God is not there. And many times people define the presence of God by the absence of trouble. But you know what he said? I am your present help. In a time of trouble. Wow. 
This was what Ruth and her husband did not know. So, when there was farming in Bethlehem, Ruth's husband took Ruth and their two sons and they left Bethlehem and went to Moab. They left Bethlehem. And what's the meaning of Bethlehem? The bread basket of God. So they left the bread basket <laughs> because of farming and went to Moab, the place of curse. They left because there was farming. Because there is farming doesn't mean that God is not there. Sometimes because there is trouble in your home doesn't mean that God is not there. Is somebody hearing me? So what happened? Ruth, the husband, the two sons, they left Bethlehem and went to Moab. And the husband died because he took them there. The children got married and they could not reproduce. For more than 10 years, they died. Not that the women were barren, but they didn't hear from God. And get what? When they all died, and Naomi, come on, it's Naomi, not even Ruth. Sorry. And Naomi decided to return to Bethlehem. When she went there, everybody she left was alive and they were doing well. And she that escaped the famine, thinking that God was not there, she had lost her husband and her two sons. And came with her daughter-in-law. And what she said to them. No, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Because God has dealt with me. Where are you blaming God? People don't hear from God and they blame God. She said, call me bitter. Mara, because God has dealt with me. No, you left him. Because there is famine doesn't mean that God is not there. The same roof that couldn't give birth for her son was able to give birth for Boaz. So she wasn't barren. But they were misplaced. Are you hearing me? They were misplaced. She left God's bread basket and went to the land of incest where God didn't want to multiply. So Isaac went to the king in order to leave. But verse 2, the Bible says, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, you cannot experience supernatural increase if you don't hear from God. We need to find out what is God saying about the situation. Remember the theme for my short message is commission for supernatural increase. So Isaac heard from the Lord and what did the Lord say? Stay right here. Verse 2, and the Lord appeared unto him and said, go not down unto Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Dwell in the land. Stop doing things the way other people did it. <laughs> Stop doing things the way other people did it. Let me tell you something. 
God did not give every human being the same formula. That is why some babies can come with their head and some babies come with their feet. Even coming out is not the same formula. Are you hearing me? Amen. Now, because in the days of the first famine, which the Bible mentioned, his father Abraham went down to Egypt. So he wanted to do what his father did. But God said, no, stay right here. And be where I will tell you of. Verse 3, so join in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto who? Which I swear unto who? Now, God said, stay right here. I will bless you. I will give all the countries around here to you and your seed. I'm going to prosper you. I will do unto you what I swore to Abraham, your father. Hi. Commission. Now, this means that everything that God was saying that he was going to do for Isaac because of the farming was not because of Isaac. It was because of Abraham. So what God is about to do for Isaac is what he swore to Abraham. So God is doing it to Isaac because of what he swore to Abraham. It's because of Abraham. David said, is there anyone left in Saul's house that I can show favor, that I can show mercy? In 2 Samuel chapter 9, for the sake of Jonathan. So everything that David wants to do for anyone left in Saul's house was not because of themselves. Wow, I love that passage. So, when they mention, oh, we know one that is left. You know how they concluded it? We know a son of Jonathan that is left. Mephibosheth, who is in Lodibab. But, he is lame. He is crippled in the legs. You know why they mention that? Because even crippled animals were not permitted to enter the palace. Crippled people are not permitted to enter the palace. So even though there is one left, but he is disqualified. He is not qualified to come in the palace. And David said, fetch him. If I was doing it for him, then his crippledness would stop it. But what I'm about to do is because of Jonathan. Somebody not hearing me. It's because of Jonathan. It's not because of him. Jonathan is not crippled. Rababo shata laba kasata laba shata. So Isaac, I know you are not a man of faith. But what I'm about to do is because Abraham and myself, we have already established covenants. That is why I'm about to bless you even in the place of farming. I am not qualified for anything that I have today. I'm not qualified for where I am today. I'm not qualified for what I'm enjoying today. But all is because of Jesus. If it is only because of me, God will not do many things for me. But because of Jesus, because of the agreement that Jesus made, hallelujah, somebody, to pay the price. So when God is looking down, he's looking for people to bless because of Jesus. That is why we got to be in Christ. Hallelujah. 
He said, Isaac, I'm going to bless you because of your father. You know what? Many of us don't receive from God, even healings and miracles, because we think God got to do it because of us. But if you know, it says only words, if you know, that it is not because of you, you are always qualified for it. Even though you are crippled, you are going to get it. Hallelujah! The Lord said, crippled cannot come. But I'm coming there because of Jonathan and not because of myself. I'm getting it because of Jesus. I'm not getting healed because I am good. I am healed because by his stripes. I'm going to be healed because he took my infirmities and he bore them on the cross. I'm going to get my miracle because it is him that said, I am the Lord that healed thee. It's because of him. So Isaac, you don't need to run away. What I'm about to do is not just because of you, but because of Abraham. I have sworn to Abraham. I have made oath with Abraham. And that is why. Verse 4. And I will make the seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. <laughs> And we gave unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. You know, something about this seed and stars. In, in, in Genesis chapter 15, God met Abraham after he called Abraham in chapter 12 and promised Abraham a lot of things he didn't show up again to Abraham so in chapter 15 when Abraham saw he said now I got you so you mean a slave that I bought in my house he will take over everything that you are blessing me with how can this be and God said, come on, Abraham. You don't know me. Why are you doubting me? Abraham, let's take a stroke. And God and Abraham took stroke outside. And they were lecturing. They were conversing. And he said to Abraham, Abraham, listen to me. When I tell you something, I will do it. But let me show you what I will do. He said, look up. Can you see the stars? Abraham said, yes. He said, can you count them? He said, count them. And that is how I will make you see. I know you're not understanding. Why he's not making them like any other thing, but he's making them like the stars. Everything coming out of you will be a star. You're not getting it. So some of you think only those who are in Hollywood, they are the stars. But you are also a star. Hallelujah. Because you don't know, that is why you are not shining. <laughs> I will make all your descendants stars. He says, look, count and see. I will make them as the stars. So while Abraham was looking, Abraham saw Isaac. He saw Jacob. He saw Benjamin. He saw Joseph. While he was counting, he saw Judah, the man of praise. He saw Issachar, the one that understood times. He saw Joseph, the man that would go and save his people. He started to look at them. He was seeing all the stars. Were they ordinary? They were stars. And he went further. And he saw Jesus. And from there, he saw me. And 
And by the time he reached to my star and he saw me, he started to cry. Abraham started crying. He couldn't say anything again. And that is what he was repeating to Isaac. That because of what the covenant I made with Abraham to make his seed stars is what I'm about to do to you is because of what I swore to him. Now watch this. Joseph said, I saw 11 stars bow. Did he call his brother's name? And what did they say? So do you mean that we all bow to you? He only told them dream. He never interpreted anything. But they knew that they were all stars. <laughs> they knew that they were all stars. But their stars will bow to his star. When the wise men entered the palace of Herod, they asked Herod, they say, where is he who is born? What? King of the Jews. How do you know? Because we have seen. It was the star that told them who the baby was. Some of you don't even know. You think why in the village when somebody gives birth, there are people who go to check the star of the child. They want to know your destiny is a star they check. And when they see that that star shows that that child will be better than their children, they begin to fight. When they got to know the star of Joseph, they began to fight. It is your star that provokes people to fight. You are a star. There's a star that represents you. When you look in the sky, there your star is there. I know you don't believe me. But what does Revelation say? Jesus is what? The bright and morning star. Not he has. He is. Is the star that shines even in the morning. <laughs> Other stars shine at night. But he is the bright, even in the brand new morning, he is still shining. So everything was because of the covenant. When uh, verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments and statutes and my laws. Because, now all the things I'm promising to do for you is not because of anything that you have done. As a matter of fact, you are planning to run away. Are you seeing it there? He said, because, so why is he going to do that? Because Abraham obeyed my voice. He kept my commandments, my charge, and my statutes, and my laws. So what I'm about to do is because of what Abraham and Seth have done already. Then the Bible says, and Isaac dwelt in Jerah. So everything else that Isaac will do, whether he blunder, he doesn't blunder, there is something that is going to work for him. <coughs> I'm writing another book that will soon be publishing on covenant. You know, it will help you to understand more of this. When I publish that one, very powerful book. And we talk details about covenant in a way you have not seen it before. So the Bible says, Isaac was still confused and wanted to find his own way of survival. There are people who do not believe 
what happens with the bloodline. You know when Abraham lied in Genesis chapter 12, Isaac was not born. But because it was in the blood, Isaac also decided to lie all the way in 26. Are you with me? The same way a father had a beautiful woman. He himself we were in the blood. He formed a beautiful woman. The Bible says he was afraid that they would kill him because she was fair to look upon. I mean she was beautiful. Some of you can be bluffing things and say you are really beautiful until you see Sarah. I'm not joking. Watch this. When the God called Abraham, he was 75. And Sarah was 65. And their ages increased even before they went to Egypt. And the Bible says that in Genesis chapter 12, when the princes of the land, the rulers, when they saw Sarah, they were captivated by her beauty. And so they went to the king. They said, man, man it's going to super Jew in town. Imagine 65 year old woman and the king leaving all the virgins to take her. Read your Bible. Sometimes I don't know how God makes me to read Bible, but read your Bible. Pastor Kofa, read it. When did they go to Egypt? She was born in 65. And the king the princess, they saw her beauty. They even went and informed the king. And the king was leaving every other virgin to take 65 year old. That's how beautiful she was. She was 65 and her husband was afraid that because of her beauty, people might kill him. And the same thing with Isaac. And so he lied that his wife was also his sister. But they couldn't do anything because of the covenant that God had with Abraham. Are you with me? Amen. And so that I can end. You see, the power of covenant we should be explained more in that book. Look at the power of covenant. From, from, from Adam to Abraham is 2,000 years. If you calculate the ages that the Bible gave in Genesis chapter 5. So to Adam, is two, I mean to Abraham is 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus, 2,000 years. From Jesus to us, 2,000 years plus now. Now, but watch this. 2,000 years after Abraham had died, more than 2,000 years, Jesus came on the scene in Luke chapter 13. And beginning from verse 11, he went in the temple to preach. And there was a lady that was bent and couldn't help herself. You remember that? And while he was preaching, he saw the lady and called the lady, went and laid his hands on her and said, Woman, thou art loose. You are loose from your infirmities. Her bishop got angry. Her prophets got angry. Why must you be healed on the Sabbath day? And listen to what Jesus said. <laughs> if you, which of you, when your sheep or your goat falls in the pit on the Sabbath day, you will remove it. So why shouldn't this lady, what did Jesus say? Who was the lady? Let me hear the Bible people here. Who was she? Why shouldn't this lady, the daughter of Abraham, whom the devil had bound for 18 years, not be loose? Now my point here is, she wasn't healed because Jesus was powerful. Jesus is saying that she was entitled to healing because she was a daughter.
You know, sometimes we are striving to see whether we have faith. But simple thing you need to believe. <laughs> Instead of looking for all the faith all over the place, for your miracle, for your marriage, for your breakthrough, you just need to lean on what Jesus had done. Listen, let me tell you something that will shock you. All the blessings we have is not from Jesus. I know some people watch me say, did that again, teach all kinds of things. But let's look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 very quick before I come to my close. Because when I'm teaching Bible, I can just go on forever. Galatians 3 13. Let's find it quick and we'll come back to Genesis 26. Can we all read it? Go on to the next verse. Yeah, 14. Now, so what blessing will we receive? Jesus only died for Abraham's blessings to transfer to us. That's the Bible, New Testament. Jesus went on the cross and became a curse for us. Because curse is he that hangs on the tree. And the Bible says he became a curse so that the blessings of Abraham were transferred to us, the Gentiles. He was only doing something for the transference of the blessing. So even while he was walking on the earth, it was the blessing of Abraham that made the lady to be him. So the blessing was because of the commission of Abraham. Abraham is referred to as the father of faith. And he is also referred to as a friend of God. So that your father commission making all the blessings to come to you. But if you were not getting it. That is why you got to be careful how you treat your father. When you want to fight for yourself to get many things, it might be difficult. But God can just look at your father commission. People, people, people don't know what commission is. Many things that, that, that will happen for you. Listen, I've had a lot of boys, men, ministers. And when they are under your, every commission carries grace. So when you are under that commission, things will happen for common. disciples came by. Even, even the demons were subject to us in your name because of your commission. <laughs> the demons were subject to us. Now move on to your commission. Go try your own. Now watch this. Paul went and cast out demons. They took handkerchiefs and aprons from his body and people got healed. And miracles happened. People got delivered. The sons of Sceva came. And they were not part of that commission. They said, in the name of Jesus, that Paul preaches, come out. The demon said, okay, but we know Jesus. And we know Paul, he's part of the commission. But who are you? Which commission are you using? Let's go to Genesis chapter 26 so I can close. People don't know what commission can do. Imagine God speaking to Isaac and saying, look, Piki, all the things you come and enjoy is not because of you, it's because of the commission. Daughter, you are entitled to healing not because of you, but because of the commission. And it's easy for you to forget that it is a commission. 
We are back to Genesis 26. Let me just fast forward for the sake of time. Let me show you something. So because of the commission, Robo Shatalabakasata, you remember that when, when Abraham <laughs> explained and admitted that Sarah was his wife, and after everything, the king gave order nobody should touch her. You remember that? Say, if anyone touches her, <laughs> you will die. Now, see how the commission transferred to Isaac, verse 11 of Genesis 26. Even though you are wrong by lying, but commission can protect you. Listen, we can make all kinds of mistakes in life, but the commission you are under can protect you. There are some people that can behave so careless and they are supposed to die by certain things, but the commission will just deliver them and say, mercy. The commission will speak and say, mercy, mercy, mercy. And you don't know why it's speaking for you. So look at verse 11. And Abimelech charged all his people saying, he that touched this man or his wife shall surely be put to what? Somebody say commission. The same thing that was said during Abraham's time is the same thing said by Isaac. I mean, in Isaac's time. Now watch this. Another king, a different king, not even Egyptian king. The king of the Philistines saying the same thing. With Isaac being unconscious of it. <coughs> Now verse 12. Then Isaac did what? He sold in that land. And received in the same year, how much? And the Lord blessed him. What made Isaac to receive hundredfold? I want you to look at that passage very well. He sold. Eh? The commission was with him. And he sold. And he received hundredfold. Because according to the principles of sowing, you can get 30, 60, and 100. Hmm? So even though he was under his father's commission, but the commission worked with the principal and gave him hundredfold. But watch this. Isaac received the hundredfold before God blessed him. Read it again. You know, all along I used to think that it was the, the blessing of the Lord was a hundredfold. The hundredfold was by principle and commission. But after the hundredfold, before the Lord blessed him. Now, when the Lord blessed him, that the blessing I was showing for in verse 13. So what happened in verse 13 because of the blessing? And the man, verse 13, what does it say there? And the man was great that because of the blessing. And he went forward because of the blessing. And he grew what? Until he became very great because of the blessing. If you don't submit to the commission and follow principles, the blessing will not come. Now watch this. You see, when principle gave people some things, they can think they are already blessed. 
I want you to look at that verse, verse 12. You know what happened? Verse 12. Between he got hundred forth and the Lord blessed him. Some things happened there. God saw that Isaac was carrying the right attitude. There are people that the principles in the kingdom will give some blessing. But when they're carrying the wrong attitude, they can't get to the place of blessing. Some people can get to a certain level they think that where they should be. Okay, imagine God took Joseph from slavery to manager of Potiphar's house. Do you know that most of us in here, believers, and even those that are watching me, when they leave from the place of slavery to that manager place, you think you have already arrived. But Joseph headed to the palace when he rejected Potiphar's wife. The attitude he manifested in Potiphar's house was what made him to get to the palace. But many people, you see, the principles made Isaac to get hundredfold. Principles are some things that are set. But it can only make you get what anybody can get. Now watch this. When unbeliever pay tithe, they can get blessing for you. Because that principle. But there are certain blessings unbeliever cannot get. <clears throat> That principle, listen, principle can give anybody anything. But for you to get to the place of supernatural increase in verse 13, <laughs> there must be character. You see, that is why yesterday, you know, I don't know why people miss this, but if I keep going over all the days and I, I won't go forward. You see, that is why yesterday I told you that according to 5782, the Jewish calendar. God wants you to respect the kind of partnership you enter into. Because he can bless you to get to a certain level. When you meet the wrong partnership, you might lose everything. Just by one Jonah getting on the ship, the business people lost all their goods. No, read your Bible. The Bible said they threw all their containers and all the goods into the ocean before they realized that Jonah was a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling them in Hawaii, I said, listen to me. Ship can take you further than where plane can take you. Where ship can reach you, plane can reach you there. Somebody said, hmm, I'm telling you. Because wherever you go in life, the height you reach, it will be by other friendship, relationship, partnership, or fellowship. It got to be some kind of a ship. If you are in the wrong fellowship, you have problems. You are in a wrong relationship, you have a problem. So you got to be careful with the ship you enter. If you enter Jonah's ship, you lost everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see, Isaac saw, and he got a hundredfold. But when he did the right thing and go in the right shape, then the Lord blessed him. And then he became great. He went forward and he was very great. These are principles of supernatural increase. You must hear from God. You must understand the commission you are under. 
There are many things you can never get by yourself. I'm telling you. There are some people I have to pray sometime whole month or all night prayer for seven days before they get small breakthrough. There are some people in our ministry thank God we are alive. Like my son who is the minister of um, assistant minister of public works he's one of my pastors in the church like my administrator you know, success and some other people even like one of the renowned journalists Julius J all of them they understand the commission so I just speak Julius applied for that scholarship, one of the highest scholarships in the whole world from Great Britain, from the UK. And yeah, each man, and they were doing a whole lot of stuff. You had to take this test, do this one, and they are picking only 300 students from around the world. And Julius knew what to do. He just come and say, Papa. Most of them, I speak over them before you come to pass. He knows what I'm talking about. One of my sons, see what the commission did for him. After he came to the covenant service and saw him and did what he was supposed to do, he respects the commission. So every year, his first salary, he brings it to me. Every year, his first salary, I'm talking about Taivo, the whole salary, he brings it. He understands the commission and covenant so that he finds for you bring it. Right after doing that, one Indian guy that was working with Metal Steel wrote him and his boss a letter that they were being dismissed. He's dismissing them and they should come and meet him in Bikana. He brought the letter to me. And I read the letter. I said, but did you read the letter well? He said, yes. I said, but you know that they're making mistake." <laughs> This letter is addressed to the wrong person. Hallelujah. Not you. So go there and let him know it's the wrong person. And the guy went to Buchanan and met the man, the boss, and he said, oh, I'm sorry, you know what? <laughs> um, it's your boss that we remove, but you will remain and we increase your salary. Listen, your own prayer can't do that. I'm telling you, your own prayer cannot do that. It's the commission. Success wanted to do a master's with Liverpool University. He had to pay $25,000. He never had, where you take 25000 US from? And he said, Papi, I know I'll call you anything you say. Even if he wants to change job. I said, okay, so what do you want? He said, I just want you to speak. And I spoke. And he did the course. And went to Liverpool in the UK for his graduation and came back. Where the money came from, nobody knew. Supernatural is by commission. So everything that happened to Isaac because of Abraham. God made him to know. He said, I'm doing it because of what I swore to your father Abraham. You want to enjoy supernatural increase this year? Have regard for the commission. Let's stand to our feet. Many things will struggle to happen for us as children of God. We should not be struggling if we understand how God operates. You know, if you don't understand it, Pastor Kofa, you know what you will do? Even what belongs to you, you won't cloak together. From the womb, God spoke to, to Rebecca. In Constance, God said to Rebecca, 
The younger one is the one that has the covenant. He will be greater than the elder one. In Genesis chapter 25, remember that? While she was pregnant with Esau and Jacob. So the younger one. But do you know that he was doing a whole lot of crooked things just to get what was already his? He didn't have to crook to be great. So all the crooking things he did, took him from his mother that loved him. He went over there. They crooked him with wife. The woman he worked for seven years, they gave him the wrong one. He had to work again to get that one. They exchanged his wages ten times in his own uncle's house. Nothing was fixed until he wrestled. And the angel said, no, you are not supposed to be Jacob. You are supposed to be Israel. It was that encounter that changed his life. The brother that was looking for him to kill him when he saw him embracing because of the encounter. When people don't understand commission, you can be even croaking to survive. Understand the commission can bring you healing, can bring you deliverance, can bring you breakthrough, can give you everything you need easily. Easily. Until the king and his whole leaders, they all denied. Listen, they, 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 they envied Isaac. Imagine king envying you. In a place that you are a stranger. They envy you. When you understand these things, you have struggle in life. Raise up your hands and begin to talk to the Lord. Tell him thank you for his word today. Somebody tell the Lord thanks for his word today. Come on, bless the name of the Lord for his word today. In Jesus' name. Close your eyes, everyone, and say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I've heard your word, and I believe your word. Therefore, tonight, tonight I submit I submit to the commission, to the commission that you have placed me on that you have placed me on. That no bullet, that no bullet from the enemy, from the enemy, will touch me, will touch me. The commission, the commission, we arrest that bullet, we arrest that bullet, we arrest the crisis, we arrest the crisis, and take me beyond, and take me beyond. I believe it today. I believe it today. My life is receiving a turn around. My life is receiving a turn around. After this week, after this week, my life shall not be the same. My life shall not be the same. Everything that was ever denied me, everything that was ever denied me, I'm walking away with them after I'm this week. I'm walking away with them after this week. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, I will take the head of my Goliath. I will take the head of my Goliath and hold it in my hand. And hold it in my hand. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I stand by the authority of the commission. And I declare that the healings are permanent. I stand by the authority of the commission that the Lord had given to me which covers this ministry anyone that has been denied anything good you shall return to receive a double your amen is too low like you don't believe it anywhere that you are denied something good you are returning to receive a double in the name of Jesus every door that was slammed Close before you, it will open wide by divine sensor. I release the blessings of God upon you. I release the grace of God upon you. I release the anointing of God upon you. 
to destroy every yoke you came here with to remove every burden you came here with to take away every blockade from your way in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father thank you Lord in Jesus name amen tomorrow is another level and by this weekend I will be going into deliverance because we want to make sure that you are clear in this year that God has promised us supernatural increase amen it's going to be powerful celebrate Jesus as I turn over somebody put your hand together for Jesus put your hand together for Jesus Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Come by. Everybody come by. Stand on your feet. Amen. Raise your hand. Father will take you. Stretch your hand to Bishop. Say, Bishop, and pray for him. Say, Lord, give increasing with more wisdom, power, knowledge. God, him. Pray for Bishop. Say, just what you want happy for you. Lay it happy for him. Pray. Everybody just pray. Lay karabashita. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father God, for supernatural doors to open. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for abundance rain to fall upon our bishop and his wife and his ministry. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare the favor, the extra, the hardest favor will rest upon them more and more. In the name of Jesus.